what I'm going to talk about in this video is how I started my business. Um, way back in the 1990s, I decided I was going to become a writer. Um, I had just graduated college, and I couldn't find any work, so I started writing stories on the side um, while I was looking for work, and after, after about a year or so, I had written my first novel, and... After I wrote my first novel, I decided to learn about the publishing business. Um, I started learning, doing the, I picked up the books, like the Writer's Guide. I learned how to write query letters. I learned how to write a synopsis. And I met with a lot of rejection. And the main reason why I met with a lot of rejection was it was the time of the, it was the African-American craze, you know, there was the single successful black woman craze. And the book I was promoting was a book about the main character was a black man and it was about the issues of black men and what I found was that the book market really again it's really you know a lot of people don't say it but it, it seems kind of sexist towards African American against African American men and in the 90s the people weren't really publishing industry really wasn't interested in publishing books from the perspective of black men or the issues of black men nor were they issue, interested in, in publishing books in other genres, such as African-American fantasy or science fiction. It, really, it, was, it was really slanted towards African-American women and the romance market. And I wanted to do different types of books. I wanted to do unique types of fiction. I wanted to do unique types of nonfiction. And in order to do that, I realized I would have to start my own business. So around, I mean, I didn't, in 2002, I started, I published my first book, Isis, but I published it, it was African American Fantasy, I published it through a print-on-demand publisher, and it did fairly well, it did fairly well, and then, and it was African American Fantasy, it got pretty good reviews, probably pretty good following, sold a couple copies, and I was going to go with print-on-demand for a while, I, I did do print-on-demand with my, I, I had... What happened was, uh, I mean, let me get my thoughts together. I was getting ready to do another book um, in 2004. I thought I was going to, again, I was trying to do another book. Um, was, this one was called the Cassandra Cook book. It was a romantic comedy. It was about African-American business. And I did get a few nibbles from publishers and literary agents, but they, again, they didn't want to do it. And one of the reasons why I think they didn't want to do it was because it featured a black woman owning her own business. It was about a black family, and it was a romantic comedy. And they really don't want to do those type of things. And they really didn't want to do this thing. They kept saying it wasn't right for them, but they wanted to. They 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 did want to read it, but they said it wasn't right for them. And I had a lot of comedy in there, and I had a theme in there about down low men. Um, and I really showed how the down low man was not. Um, because in romantic comedies, and white romantic comedies, they always have the gay male best friend. But I show the down low guy as a dishonest, unethical, um, he's a predator. I show him as a predator and as the bad guy. And I show a black woman, black family. I show, because there's a father in, in the story. Uh, it's a black owned business started by a father. And I, I understand now, those are some of the reasons why I think the book wasn't picked up. Because I, I had a family a full functional family, two-parent household. The main character comes from a two-parent household with a mother and a father. Uh, I show a lot of I show um a lot of functionality. I show a lot of um things about business in that story. I showed a lot of things about business and business etiquette and social skills. And you you would learn a lot you're gonna learn you would learn a lot from this book. African Americans would have learned a lot from this book, but I couldn't find a publisher so again, I, I was out of work for a long time because I had uh, some depression issues and anxiety issues from a previous job that I had lost. And part of, of I was looking for work while I was doing that. Then I finally found another job in civil service, and I saved my money. I saved money for about ninety days, and then I went and published it with a print-on-demand company. And in two thousand, that was in two thousand eight. I published it, and Quality was, it's like, the, I had a lot of issues with that book, 
Um, the interior wasn't really as good as it could have been. Everything was kind of jammed together. And the cover really, it was, it was my art, but it wasn't that great. I could have done better. And I felt that in order to give my readers a better quality reading experience, I was going to have to start learning how to make my own stuff. Learning my, how to make my own books. And I had been studying um, how to make my own books, but I just didn't have the equipment or the, or the, or the uh, resources because I had, at the time, like in 2007, my computer had broke down. I had my first laptop. It died. The motherboard had died because I had it since 2001. And at the time, I was learning how to put together PDFs and how to design and do page layouts and stuff like that with Microsoft Word. And but I took it to another level. Um, in 2008, after I had published the Cassandra Cookbook, I started really started learning how to put together my own PDFs, learning how to design my own covers. I picked up a um, copy of Photoshop, and I learned how to do Photoshopping. And after that, I started doing research into um, Lightning Source, and I learned how to do books through Lightning Source. I learned how to put together, how to buy my ISBNs. I learned how to um, do the page layout. Again, I learned how to do page layouts properly because I wanted to give my readers a quality reading experience because print-on-demand publishers, a lot of them, they like to jam. They like to, they like to cram all the words together. They don't really want to give you things like white space. And you really need white space for a quality reading experience. You need to have that little space between the lines of each paragraph so that your eyes can rest and really think about what you just read. And that's why that was one of the reasons why I wanted to um, start my own publishing company because I really wanted to give readers a quality reading experience. I wanted to give them bigger fonts because another thing that a lot of print-on-demand publishers like to do is they like to jam all your words together in this uh, like 10-point font or 11-point font. And I really, in most of my books, I design my books to be easy to read. So I wanted to give readers that 12-point font with a um, white space, and I wanted to do it at a competitive price. I wanted to get make sure that readers were paying the same price as Barnes & Noble or Amazon for regular paperback. And when I designed, and um, in order to do that, I had to start my own thing. So in 2009, I got a contract with Lightning Source, um, started designing my own books, and I decided, because I had several scripts that I had already written, they were sitting in the box, in, in a box, and I had, even though I had lost my, this job, the other civil service job I had, um, I took my savings and I started publishing new books. Um, the first book I did was a screenplay book. Um, I, took, I, I took a screenplay that I had written, and I laid it out and designed it, um, to be easy to, in an easy-to-read paperback format. And that was called All About Maryland. It was about a um, faded child star um, trying to rebuild her life. And it turned out it was very critically acclaimed. A lot of people liked it. And more importantly, people liked the design. A lot of people um, told me they really liked the way I lay out pages, they really liked the way I do design, and they really liked the covers and stuff. Um, um, really, and um, they really liked the designs and stuff. They liked, and it, it was, it was, it was a tremendous success. And since then, since two thousand nine, um, I've been publishing my own things and trying to get readers with the SJ. I mean, I've been really publishing my own things with this SJS Direct imprint, and it's it's been a lot of work. Um, around 2010, I started doing ebooks, and I learned ebook form, ebook formatting, and ebook design. And when I learned, and after I learned ebooks, I mean, it's just like no problem. I can I can now do paperbacks and ebooks, and it's it's been fun publishing my own stuff and doing my own design but I'm learning mark and like right now I'm learning more marketing and sales and I'm trying to learn how to um, reach larger audiences of readers and I'm trying to find new ways of discovering readers and since 2002 I've gone from one book 
to about 35, 36 titles. And I'm hoping to get, I'm right now I'm hoping to get more sales. I'm trying to expand my reading audience. And I have expanded in some of my reading audience in surprising ways. I mean, I'm just trying, I've reached foreign people in countries all over the world with my SJS Direct titles. But my primary goal is trying to reach the African American community because the reason why I got into writing was to create positive stories about the African American experience and share the African and to show African Americans that they can take it to the next level. That there that, that there is a pot there is more to life than the ghetto, there is more to life than um the streets. And that that's always been our, our way of doing things. I mean, even Ever since, even before slavery, African Americans have always been about thrift, about building up a community, building up things. It's only recently that, in the last 40 years, that black people have been on this decline. I mean, black people have always been about building businesses, establishing families, um, and living... Um, conservatively, but that's what that's the type of stories I want to tell, and I really want to bring that positive African American experience to people. I mean, I grew up on Cosby Show, I grew up on Benson, Fresh Prince. I grew up with a lot of positive images, and I want to share that positive African American experience with this generation because I feel really feel a lot of African Americans need to understand um, that this ghetto culture, this street culture, that's not us. That was created by Madison Avenue and Hollywood um, as the their interpretation of what African Americans are. That's not who we are. Um, who we are has always been, we've always been functional people. We've always been innovators. We've always had businesses. We were never this, this, this on this welfare state. We were always pulling our own weight and taking care of our own business. And those are the type of stories I want to tell and... I want to diversify this African American book market. That's that's another goal I have in the next five, ten years. I really want to see put more different types of African American books out there and make this African American book market really grow because it, it's 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 really it's 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 not only stagnated, it's it's degraded. I I remember African American books in the nineties and in the late eighties when there was a lot of intelligent literature out there when there were a lot of different types of books, when there were a lot of different types of genres. Right now, it's a, it's a coon fest, and it's sad. It's like, when I, when I go to a bookstore by Barnes Noble looking for titles, it's, it's disappointing. Everything is about drug dealers or thugs, and everybody's trying to... It's that type of... That's, and that's not our experience. That's not who black people are, and... We need to, we need to start looking at other experiences and other perspe and are looking at ourselves from other perspectives. I really feel that in this publishing business, I really want to take it to the next level. I really want to reach African American readers. I really want black people to start buying books that really make them think about themselves and take a really really hard look at themselves. Um, that's all I have to say. Um, comment, rate, and subscribe.